the one that was iconic for me was Harley and Ivy, where they meet Harley oh. Quinn and they, and 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 uh, Harley is obviously being terribly abused by the Joker, and. Ivy is shocked and horrified and starts lecturing her on you do not let men talk to you that way. You do not let men treat you that way. That particular episode seems to resonate so much with the young women. And they've uh, uh, there have been people that I think have been abused in their childhood who came up and said, this changed my life. And I'm very proud of that. I'm gratified that they do. I think it's really awesome. Um, like I said, I, I had a feeling, I, we knew we were making something really good. You know, you, you couldn't be in the recording booth with Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill and Tara Strong and Diane Pershing and Arlene Sorkin and all these wonderful people and not knew that you were, you know, in the presence of greatness. So, um, but, uh, I mean, it was weird. I, I was kind of aware of it. I mean, weirdly enough, I remember when we first got the, uh, the prototypes of the toys, when we had, you know, Kenner, you know, we were working with Kenner early on to, you know, to do the show or to do the cartoons, or the, the toys based on the cartoon, and they dropped by one day and they, they had prototypes of the toys, and I kind of went, okay, now this is, this is some kid's, you know, childhood. This is absolutely some kid's childhood. They're going to play with these toys and they're going to love them to death. And, um, and I kind of knew at that moment, I said, yeah, this is going to be the kids of this generation, kind of like what what Adam West and Carmine Infantino and Murphy Anderson were to my childhood. You know, it's like that's their iconic Batman. I was not a comic book guy. Uh, Later on, I developed an admiration for comics, and uh, now I love them. But at the time, I, I did not know Robin's backstory. So when I got Robin's Reckoning, that was my first introduction to oh and that informed a lot of my character and it was such a it was so well done and subtly done I'll never forget that moment you don't see the death of his parents you see the rope and then the broken rope swing back in and it's that's very cinematic that's what was great about the show it was like a really good movie it wasn't just it wasn't a cartoon it was a really good movie I mean, it's a 180, right? I put on my Twitter once a picture of them side by side, and I said, and you think you have an identity crisis? Um, And they're both so fun. I mean, it's like Batgirl is the only show I do that's my own voice. And then Harley's so crazy, that's like my therapy. So there's really wonderful things about playing both. When I see Batgirl on a script, it takes me back to this day when I'm in between Hamill and Conroy and Ephraim Zimbliss, and it's very nostalgic. But then Harley's so fun. So if you ask me who I'd rather play the rest of my life, I couldn't choose. They're just both such extraordinary, strong female characters. My proudest moment is the moment in Mask of the Phantasm when he is at his parents' grave and he's pleading with them to release him from his vow. That was a real acting challenge for me and I was really proud of what I came up with. I also was really proud at the end of Killing Joe and at the end of Arkham Knight where the laughter has to just build and build and build and it's just like this madness takes over him. And it's almost like he takes on part of the Joker. Um, I love when your actors love to be challenged. And I love when it's challenging like that. Both of those moments were really challenging for different reasons and I was really proud of.